Tony, with uh, with Reed, what exactly will you guys be looking for to make a determination of what, when he can come back? That's a tough question for me. It's, it's all about the medical staff and their determination with Reed. So you probably have to go through them to get those answers to those questions. And you guys are uh, turning opponents over less in recent games, fewer points off turnovers. How how much of a concern is that? Um, it's a concern that we had been doing it, but we have to get back to doing what we were doing to cause those turnovers. And that was, uh, we were really getting after the ball. We were pressuring, we were making pass, passes difficult. We were getting in passing lanes. We were being very disruptive in our opponent's offense, and that hadn't been the case. Uh, definitely not the last game. Uh, Tennessee was able to do what they wanted, run what they wanted, get the ball where they wanted. Um, give them credit for being able to do that, but we weren't how we've been defensively. And uh, so we got to get back to that because that's a key in our success is uh, being very disruptive and getting points off the turnovers. How much of that was Tennessee just doing a good job, and how much of that was not, you guys not doing what you were supposed to do defensively? Combination of both. Now. They're a very good team. Uh, so there's nothing taken away from Tennessee. Um, they did what they were supposed to do in our home court, on their home court. We did what we were supposed to do in our home court versus them. Um, but definitely when we look back and watch the film, um, we had some guys back up defensively, some guys individually and, and us collectively as a team. And we'll take that as a, a learning opportunity and uh, try to make those changes in this upcoming game. When Cal points out certain players were selfish, is that 99% of the time on offense? No. Uh, it's probably 50-50 offensively and defensively. But you, you can be very selfish on the defensive end of the floor as well. And those, both of those things were in effect in our Tennessee game. How tough is it for Ashton as a freshman to be the point man in on-ball defense against good guards most nights? How tough is that to, to keep it, you know, at a high level? Yeah, not to make excuses. Um, because we're, what he's trying to do in this game, uh, with his game at this level, and then hopefully for him, what he wants at the, the level beyond that, he has to do it every night against really good guards because that's what this game is, and that's what the guards that have come before him in this program have been able to do. But that's not all on Ashton. That's Emmanuel, that's Jamal behind him. You know, all those guys got to collectively um, bring the intensity offensively and defensively to the floor every single night. Now, you look at Jordan Bone, I mean, that's what you get from a, an experienced guard in college basketball. And, uh, and, and Ashton played like a freshman, and he played like an experienced veteran. How, do you, how are you selfish defensively? What does that look like? Well, when you're supposed to be helping in a concept that we do defensively, and you're focused on your man and looking at your man when you're supposed and he doesn't have the ball. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can be selfish defensively. Uh, and not playing your role in, in our concepts defensively can cause you to be selfish and breaks down your defense because defense is in, in individual. You've got to be good individually on the ball, uh, but defense is five guys playing as one. We didn't do that in this last game. How big of a challenge are uh, Bree and Tyree and uh, Terrence Davis in terms of uh, keeping them contained? Well, they're two of the better guards in the, in the conference, if not the country. I mean, those are guys that have been around um, college basketball for a while now, and when you watch them play on film, you see that. You see the experience um, that they have of going through the battles at, in this, at this level in this conference. So it's a challenge, especially on their home court, because they play extremely well at home. When you say you see the experience, it takes a trained eye, I would think. What what do you see that tells you there's an ex there's experience on display? You see a, a, a group of guys or a player who doesn't get rattled. I mean, everybody's going to experience adversity. And you can see a, a younger player who gets rattled and doesn't play up to his best. And you'll see a guy with some experience um, who doesn't get rattled. There'll be some challenges, some adversity they're facing, but they're able to play through it and come out on the other side. Cal talked about how the players got rattled down at Tops of Bowl, the intimidation factor. They're going to be facing something similar to that uh, tomorrow night. How concerned are you about how they respond? Well, we shouldn't be, and we shouldn't, we shouldn't have been affected at Tennessee. I mean, that's every atmosphere we face on the road is, is sold out. Typically, it's a hostile environment, and everybody wants to beat Kentucky. So it, it was uh, very out of character for us to get rattled in that environment. I expect our guys to bounce back in this next road trip.
is a game like that, I mean, nobody wants to lose. So when you lose in such a convincing way, is that maybe better in terms of a teaching tool than like Ole Miss has lost games right at the end where it could have went either way? Or do you even bother comparing those things? No, you obviously you rather learn from a close win than any kind of loss, whether it's a one-point loss or a 20-point loss. And it's, right. uh, it's better that we lost now and not in conference tournament play or, or NCAA tournament play because then your season's over. So we'll take it as a learning lesson, and hopefully we'll, our guys will learn from, from it and bounce back and, uh, and perform better. Will we practice at all today? I don't know. How did, how did Nick and EJ play Saturday? Uh, as a group, nobody performed well in, in our collective group. And that's the end result of 20 point loss to a, a top 10 team in their home court environment. So when just Nick and EJ, it was, there was not one person on our team that played in that game that performed up to their level of expectations for themselves or from the coaching staff. And Cal mentioned after the game about uh, Jordan Bone playing downhill. And he sort of intimated that he wished Ashton had done more of that. Uh, just so we know, well, what does playing downhill mean? Constantly on the attack. You know, one of Ashton's strengths, obviously, is his, his defensive ability to create havoc in the other team, on the other team's point guard and in their, in their offense. Um, but on the other side of the ball, his ability to attack with speed off of a miss or make and touch the paint with that basketball, which compromises the defense, which opens up a lot of different things, shots for him, lobs at the rim, shots for our perimeter guys who can make shots. That's what Bone did for his team. He was aggressive from start to finish. Ashton did that for our team the first game against Tennessee here. Uh, for whatever reason, he didn't do that at Tennessee, and uh, that's what the difference was in, in those two guards. Tony, a couple days ago, the Ole Miss players kneeled during the anthem. Are you anticipating any sort of additional protests, or did you all talk to the team about that situation at all? We did not talk to the team about it. Against Auburn, you all looted up from outside. Confidence and outside shooting has been the theme all year. And then against Tennessee, Cal talked about how there was an unwillingness to shoot. How frustrating has it been to kind of sustain that confidence with this year's group? Well, your, your confidence is based off of your defense. And obviously, our defense is, our defensive performance was lackluster at Tennessee. And, and you build your confidence by how hard you play, how in tuned you are on the defensive end of the floor. Because then offense just comes. If you go out on the floor and you're thinking shots, points, you know, where am I getting my shots, counting count the number of points, you're not going to play your best. And that could have been the case at Tennessee, but it goes back to we have to hang our hat on being the toughest, most physical team on the floor at the highest level defensively. And then our offense builds from that, not the other way around. Anything else, guys? Thanks, guys. All right.